We're here at the edge of the rugged, rocky Ozark Hills, staring out over this vast Mississippi floodplain swamp. This is Mingo Wilderness Area. The Mingo Wilderness Area makes up just under half of Mingo National Wildlife Refuge in southeast Missouri. Though camping isn't allowed, an auto tour will take you through most of this area, and the rest can be explored on foot or by boat. I'm lucky enough to have spent many hours here doing research for my master's thesis, and you'll see me using traps and handling wildlife throughout the video. These aren't normally permitted activities here, but this work was carried out under special research permits. But on this day, I wanted to give you an idea for what kind of wildlife you might expect to see during a single day trip visit. Mingo may be best known as an important stopover for migrating waterfowl. Thousands of ducks and geese pass through here from fall to spring, but you can see interesting birds here year-round. The American coot is a strange bird that looks like a cross between a chicken and a duck, and they're among the most common sights here at Mingo. They're awkward flyers, so you're most likely to see them swimming and wading through the marshes. You may even catch a glimpse of one of the tiniest water birds here, the pied-billed grebe. These small grebes are also poor flyers, but excel at diving to search for aquatic prey. Most of Mingo is a true lowland swamp, and almost any creature living here has to be able to traverse water when needed. Raccoons do particularly well here with such abundant prey like crayfish, amphibians, and eggs, you may even spot one of these typically nocturnal animals out foraging by day in the swamp along the auto tour. The trees here must also adapt to frequently wet, flooded soils, and bald cypress is probably the most specialized tree in the swamp. The knees of cypress trees in flooded soils are a unique feature, but their purpose still mostly eludes researchers. Nonetheless, these ancient trees are one of the most iconic features of the bottomland swamps at Mingo and throughout the southeast. But while these swamp trees are viewed as iconic and beautiful, the snakes of the swamp are infamous and feared. And none are feared quite so much as the cottonmouth or water moccasin. Cottonmouths are actually one of the most common snakes at Mingo, but they don't live up to their scary reputation. Look at this. Check this out. This is a big adult. In fact, most of the cottonmouths I encountered wouldn't stick around for any of my nonsense. Look at this. This is the western cottonmouth. This is one of the most feared snakes in the swamp, but not necessarily for good reason. Now, let me back that statement up by showing what it took to get that very short clip. After a few other cottonmouths had already fled from me that day, I found this one hanging out by a log. But as you can see, they're not really an aggressive, mean snake. Let's see if I can get him to come back out here. He's just inclined to retreat under this log and get away from me. He's not trying to attack me or bite me. Let's see where he's going. See if I can urge him to come back out here. And after some gentle coaxing, which I've sped up for your convenience, the snake finally came back out and ran for the swamp. Oh, here he goes. Moving along right here. All right. See, he's just inclined to get away from me. He's not trying to bite. Not aggressive. So I followed it into the water. I wanted to showcase just how buoyant these snakes are when they swim, but its docile behavior gave me the idea to film a segment out in the water with the snake. But as you can see, all this snake wants to do is get away and be left alone. And after getting the clip from earlier, I let the snake be and filmed it from a distance. These snakes are truly beautiful, and like most wild animals, they just don't have any desire or reason to attack people. I wanted to showcase just how much I had to pursue this animal to film it, and how it only ever tried to escape. Cottonmouths are venomous, but they only want to use this venom to kill their prey. In fact, 
They're named for the open-mouthed defense posture that gives them a way to scare off predators without even having to bite in self-defense. Mingo is a special place for snake lovers because during the spring and fall, hundreds of snakes like these cottonmouths migrate to and from their rocky dens at the edge of the Ozarks where they overwinter. Cottonmouths aren't the only venomous snakes that den up in these rocky bluffs. There's also timber rattlesnakes here. We've got a little one under this rock. Let's have a look. Many of the snakes here at Mingo spend their summers foraging down in the swamp and their winters underground high above the Mississippi floodplain, safe and warm back in the bedrock. There are also a few different species of harmless water snakes that live in the swamps, including the gorgeous broad-banded water snake. Though these snakes are at the northern extreme of their range, they're probably the most common snake at Mingo. They're generalist aquatic predators that feed on anything from fish to amphibians and invertebrates, allowing them to thrive in most aquatic habitats throughout the refuge. These diamond-backed water snakes, on the other hand, eat mostly fish and are more common near deeper permanent water. Here, the smaller male is actually courting the much larger female. Snakes have very acute sensations of touch and they use their tongues to smell even the most minute scent trails. So the male is able to track the female by smell and then uses a variety of twitches, nudges, and movements to see if she is receptive to breeding. But snakes aren't the only creatures here that are undeserving of the bad reputation Whoa. they have. Look at the size of this spider. It's right in front of me here. He's actually on top of this water in the swamp and between his size and the fact that he's kind of moving around here on the top of the water, I've got to think this is some sort of fishing spider. And they can get pretty big, but I had no idea they could get this big. This kind of, this almost rivals the size of some tarantulas I've seen. I never imagined that they got this big. But uh, as you can see, they like this aquatic environment, and uh, they can actually dive. They're obviously very good at walking around on top of the water, but they can dive too. And they'll hunt other invertebrates, as well as their name might imply, small fish, um, possibly other small vertebrates, maybe even amphibians. Let's see if I can get them on top of this stick to get a better look at them. Here we go. This gives you a closer look at the size of this. This is a really large spider. You can see his chelicer up there, his fangs. So, probably give you a good bite, but it wouldn't be dangerous, it wouldn't be deadly. Uh, all spiders are venomous, and that's a fact that I think a lot of people forget about. So, it's not a matter of whether it's venomous or not, it's a matter of whether it's venom is dangerous to humans. And around here, there really aren't any spiders that you could consider truly deadly, although a black widow or a brown recluse bite can be bad, and if there's complications, um, potentially there is the uh, chance that something could go wrong. But, all these other spiders, even when they're large and intimidating looking like this, they're not really dangerous. Um, probably like a wasp sting or a bee sting would be what it felt like. And uh, I don't like those a whole lot. I don't like getting stung, so I don't imagine I'd like getting bit by this guy either. Have another look at this before I let it go. Most visitors to Mingo Wilderness won't be trekking out into the swamps like this but I want to show you one of my favorite swamp animals and the animal I spent my time here studying. These creatures are rarely seen as they spend their entire lives under the cover of the murky, muddy swamp waters. Got a nice shallow pool here. I thought it looked good for a few interesting swamp dwelling amphibians, so I threw some traps in here yesterday. And as I look at this trap, I'm actually seeing some movement down in there, something splashing the water around, so I think we may have caught something. Let's have a look. All right, yeah, check this out. We've actually managed to catch a very secretive species of amphibian that lives in the swamp. They're actually pretty abundant, but you're not likely to see them unless you throw traps out. Because they are permanently aquatic, this is the siren. Now, the siren is, as you can see, kind of an eel-like salamander. They're permanently aquatic. They live their whole life in these swamps. You can see he's only got two front legs. He's got no rear legs. He's very slimy and hard to hold on to, but he's moving slow enough right now that I'm able to manage it. Very interesting animals. This looks to be a large female, and with how girthy she is, I assume she may actually have eggs in her. So, I'm going to go ahead and let her go, because she 
may need to go lay some eggs and probably doesn't want to be harassed by me any longer. My master's thesis was a study comparing the abundance of amphibians and artificial moist soil units to the more natural wetlands found throughout the wilderness area. Interestingly, we actually found more sirens in these artificial wetlands, largely managed for waterfowl, likely due to the increased abundance of small invertebrates that the waterfowl were also feeding on. It's always interesting how management decisions can have such varied consequences. Though these wetlands were great feeding grounds for sirens, they weren't as often used by some of the other terrestrial amphibians because they weren't forested enough. Though my focus was on sirens, I did manage to capture a few three-toed amphiumas. These, even larger eel-like salamanders, are much rarer and more secretive. They also have a bigger head with more powerful jaws and they're voracious predators. They're named for the three digits on their tiny forelimbs, and unlike sirens, amphiumas don't have external feathery gills. These swamps harbor so many more secretive and wonderful creatures than just what I've shown you today, but that only gives us a reason to return. So as you can see, Mingo Wilderness Area is a pretty unique place. It's got a great diversity of really interesting creatures. So if you ever find yourself in southeastern Missouri, I suggest you take a drive down the auto tour here, or if you're feeling really adventurous, walk out into the swamp. You never know what you're going to find.